inna a'tainaka al-kawthar we've given you the greatest the most abundant good the day that the prophet sallallahu died ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he said i had one of my friends from the ansar he said i went to him and i said to him let's go now and let's ask all of the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because they're all here now all of the companions are back because some of the sahaba a lot of them went out on futuhat they went out on conquests and things of that sort they were kind of spread out but when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam died they all came back so ibn abbas radiyallahu anhu says now we can ask all of our questions now we can go get everything the friend of ibn abbas who's also 13 years old he tells him look they don't have time for you and he said why don't we play with the pigeons cuz back then they used to play with pigeons before the age of Xbox and PS3 or whatever it is right they used to play with pigeons subhanallah that's what young people used to do imam malik rahimahullah got in trouble when he was a kid his father was mad at him because he used to play with pigeons too much so he said why don't we just go play with the pigeons why are we going to waste our time going and asking the sahaba and so on and so forth so ibn abbas radiyallahu anhu says taraktuhu so i just left him i don't even need you anymore ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he says that i would go to the doors of the sahaba fa adu ridai wa anamu ala babi and i would place my cloak i take off my top garment i'd spread it at their doorstep and i'd go to sleep at their doorstep he said fatusir rihu turaba alayya and he said the wind would be blowing dirt all over me you know i'm sl- i'm sleeping in front of these doors and just dirt is coming all over me and he said so these companions they'd open the door and they'd find ibn abbas radiyallahu anhu sleeping at the door so they would start to dust him off and they would say nahnu na'tika ya ibn ammi rasulillah we would come to you, O oh, cousin of the Prophet ﷺ, just tell us, we'll come. You don't have to go through that. You don't have to subject yourself to this humiliation or sleep in front of a door. And then Ibn Abbas anhu, he says something that became a motto for the students of knowledge. He responds and he says, Al-ilm huwa alladhi yu'ta. Or al-ilm huwa alladhi yu'ta ilayk. Knowledge is sought. Knowledge la yati. It doesn't come to you, you have to go to it. SubhanAllah, that statement is in every single book that's been written in Islamic history on Fadlul Ilm Wal Ulama, on the virtues of knowledge and the people of knowledge. You always find that statement and it became a motto for the people of knowledge. SubhanAllah, even in the early centuries it became a memorized statement. Al Ilm huwa ladhi yu'ta. You have to go to knowledge. Knowledge will not come to you. And so Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu obviously, as he goes to all of these companions, SubhanAllah, he honors them even though he is someone to be honored in and of himself. He's a great sahabi, he's a great companion, he's from the family of the Prophet ﷺ, and he's a person of ilm. But look what he does. Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu, who's not that much older than him. He's about eight years older than Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. He's a young man, the point is he's not like a, a shaykh, right? He's not like this old man. Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he's 21 years old, 22 years old. But Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu sees him coming and Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu he grabs the reins of his horse or his camel and he starts to bring it down, serving him. Right? And Zayd ibn Thabit says to him, La taf'al, don't do that. Ibn Ammi Rasulullah, O cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you don't have to do that. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu listened to what he responds. He says, Ha kada umirna an naf'ala bi kubara'ina wa ulama'ina. This is how we were commanded to treat our elders and our scholars. He's saying to Zayd ibn Thabit, you are my scholar, you're my shaykh, I have to treat you this way. So Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu says, irfa' ilayya yadik, give me your hand. So Zayd ibn Thabit, he takes his hand, and he kisses his hand, and he says, هَكَذَا أُمِرْنَا أَن نَفْعَلَ بِآلِ بَيْتِ نَبِيِّنَا This is how we were commanded to treat the family of the Prophet So subhanAllah, there's this exchange of just humility between these very young men. They understand the value of knowledge and the value of humility. And Ibn Abbas anhu, he used to reflect on that. He said, I was humble as a student and that's why I was respected as a teacher. And what happened to that, that friend of his? Ibn Abbas anhu, said, when I became famous, he used to walk by and he used to just kind of sit and he used to look at that gathering. Like One person was like serious about school and the other one was like, I oh, don't worry about it. And then this guy is like a very successful doctor now, and which is like half of our community, right? And then you've got this other guy that's working at the hospital, but he's like barely making it, and he's just looking at the doctor, and he's like, man, what did I do? What did I do with myself? So Ibn Abbas says, that friend, he used to just come and he used to look at that gathering, and he used to say, هَذَا الْفَتَى كَانَ أَعْقَلُ مِنِّي He said, that young man knew better than me. He was smarter than I was.